Y'all were in for a good one today. Got our little Bowser dude here. A little Bowser dude. Yeah. Hey, hey brother. brother! And welcome everyone to our spoiler review of the Super Mario Brothers movie. Wow, 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 wow. How yeah. about this? I mean, honestly, back in the day when we originally created the Super Carlin Brothers channel, yeah. I thought that people would, would immediately recognize that it was a slight and small play on Super Mario Brothers. Nobody has ever seemed to make the connection before, but at long last, we are finally making a piece of Mario content. I know, it does feel like in some ways, destiny has led us to this video. This is the video we have been destined to make since the beginning. The Super Carlin Brothers, who didn't start out to review movies, but did base their name on the Super Mario Brothers, are now reviewing the Super Mario Brothers movie. Let's dive on in. Okay, the Mario movie at long last, at long last. Um, this is a movie where I feel it it went through a roller coaster of expectations. Yeah. I would say. I feel as though it was originally like the, the cast was announced, and I feel like in a lot of ways people are like, ooh, ooh. Ooh, I know, yeah, like, like, yeah, when the casting was announced, it felt like everyone was super on board for Anya Taylor-Joy as Peach and Jack, Jack Black, Black as Bowser, Bowser and Charlie Day as Luigi, and then everyone in the world seemed to be like, Chris Pratt for Mario? Are we sure about that? Yeah. Um, and for this was this was my challenge to people in the months leading up to it. I, anytime I asked them, I'd be like, all right, I'll talk to you about it, but as long as the only thing you don't say, only you're not allowed to comment on Chris Pratt being the voice of Mario. Now do you have bad things to say? It was like, uh, right. I feel like I feel like this was after the Aladdin live action came out, where it was like, okay, okay, you are not allowed to say or compare Robin Williams and Will Smith, Smith. as genie. Right now, now go. go. Yeah, right. like, yeah. yeah. It's like, like it's like these are these are the ground rules for the basis of how this conversation is going to go. Uh, and that being said, like I know leading up to the film, I think Chris Pratt was just honestly getting very tired of people being like skeptical of what his performance was going to be like. It was just like, just go see the movie, right? And tell me if you have an issue with it. And so so right out of the gate, I will say it felt like one of the very, 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 very first things that the movie addresses is you see this really campy homespun um, plumbing commercial that Mario and Luigi have spent yeah. their entire life savings making. Um, the woman in the commercial, I was reading this online, I didn't realize it, but uh, the woman who's like giving like the testimonial yeah. during the commercial is actually the prior voice of Princess Peach from oh. the Super Mario TV show from oh, like the, the 90s or wow, something. Wow, that's so, so good. So that's actually, it was like a little, little tiny little Easter egg. Easter egg in there. I didn't know about, but there, anyway. There, this movie was so many Easter eggs. So many Easter yeah. eggs. Every which way you looked, Almost, almost there were more Easter eggs than just the not Easter eggs. It was almost like, wow, was that brick just part of that building? Yeah. <laughs> How about that? What? They snuck something in there. Hey. Um, okay, so then you zoom out from the commercial and you realize that Mario and Luigi are standing there. Uh, they immediately are like, we sure about the accents? And I felt like there was the 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 guy in the pizza parlor, like right there, who I, I was like, is that the real voice actor who plays Mario? Okay, so... Um, Charles Martinet, who uh, is the voice actor of not just Mario, but also like Luigi and Mario and Waluigi and many characters inside of the actual Nintendo Mario games in okay. the modern day. Super Mario, here we go! Woohoo! And Luigi too, Luigi number one! Ha ha! And Wario. Does voice Mario's dad, uh, and then also says slash Giuseppe. I'm not sure if that means his dad's name is Giuseppe or if he was the Jumpman guy. I think that's who I it think was. that's who it was. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, I think out of the gate, I will say, yeah, the voicing, it was it was this weird problem where right away they show you that TV commercial, which is like so campy and so bad, but they're doing the accents like real thick and it like, they sound pretty close to their video game counterparts. Sure. And then they immediately come out of that, are we not sure about the accents? And then, and then they have the actual voice actor talk to them like right away. Yeah. And you're like, that's what he's supposed to sound like. And then you just have Chris Pratt talking. So it was like, I almost feel like it would have been better if you included all that stuff but like, don't do it immediately. Like don't immediately present the audience with what they're expecting to hear from Mario and then change it. Right, yeah, um, yeah. But, so it's it's funny because we were literally like, all right, let's not talk about the, the Chris Pratt voice. And then immediately it's like, you kind of need well, yeah, to talk about it because do. they definitely injected it basically as like the very first thing that you see. Um, I'll say that like, as, as the movie went on, like I, but in general, I don't think that I'm someone who is typically like thrown off 
in the same way. Like I know that other people in the office before have like made comments about like, oh, the, the voice actor completely took me out of it. Like I don't usually have that problem. Yeah. And, and so for me, like I don't I don't think that in general I was I was super thrown off um, by by the voice. But like the thing that got me was almost like if you have the voice of Mario basically kind of like giving like the rubber stamp of approval right there next to Chris Pratt's Mario, like is there a world where it's like, just have why did, yeah, him? Why didn't you just, that That was the thing. It's like the voice, yeah, by the end of the movie, it wasn't a problem. I totally adjusted, like it, like I didn't notice his voice at all. The only issue is that out of the gate, they put the Mario in the movie next to the actual voice of Mario. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I was like, why, why'd you do that? Right. Other than like, it's like a fun Easter egg, which it was, and that's cool. Um, that, yeah, I mean, the movie again, was just totally full of them. But uh, that, that was really the only, I don't. I don't think it was a problem overall. No, I don't think it was a problem overall. But anyway, so I think that's that's sort of like the elephant in the room that you've got to address. So it's just sort yeah. of like you either felt good about it, bad about it, indifferent about it, didn't know any of this was even a conversation in the first place. Um, you know, I, I personally had like always like loved Chris Pratt playing Emmett in Lego Movie, and yep, and he's um, also in um, Onward. In Onward, yes, yeah, Barley, as Barley, yeah. Um, and so I will say that uh, I was I was going to say like the Lego Movie for me, I felt like I had very similar emotions going into. To, which was largely that I was like, this feels kind of like a sellout movie. Like it feels kind of just like, hey, let's capitalize on something everybody loves, like whatever. And then I, I remember going in and being just completely pleasantly surprised that it was actually an amazing movie. And I was like, I died. They, oh, I just, made, <laughs> they just made a really, really great Lego movie. Uh, and so I think that for me coming into the Mario movie, that was sort of like the big, that was the bar that I felt I was comparing it to was sort of like, surprise me. You know, like be be like that sort of like Lego movie experience where it's just like, oh man. Yeah. Um, do you did it? Do you think it delivered on that way? In that way, this this would feel like a very like early spoiler for my entire review, but I would say that I that I overall did not think that it did. Okay. Um, deliver on on what I had sort of hoped for. My my sort of like overall review was that I felt like. It felt to me like the entire movie, if you, before we really like even go in and like break it down like piece by piece, I felt like the entire movie almost felt like they could have just been cut scenes inside of any of the respective video games. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of like, it was, it, it felt to me like they were going to kind of like great lengths to like make all of the characters adjoin to a Mario Nintendo property that you already know. Yeah. And so it was kind of like, you were watching the character like go and like interact with the world. And normally it's like, like it would be a situation where you would go up and like talk to Princess Peach or whatever. And, and Princess Peach in the video game would be like, but before we go on our journey, you need to master my puzzle. And then it would be like, do it like this. And then it would show you like a Princess Peach who doesn't have to abide by the rules of the video game. And she just like cleverly like jumps like, boom, bah, ha, hoo, you know, like, slow float down right now you try and then you sit there and like this is like the opening the opening like segment of the game this is like the game training you how to play the game um the, but instead it was just sort of then like instead of you then like watching the game be played or whatever it would just be like as if you watched a video of then mario doing exactly what peach just did. Right. And similarly, like, you know, it's like you go to like the kong world and inside of the kong world they've got like um you know, like the, what, what was the original Donkey Kong video Just Donkey game? Kong Country. Donkey Kong Country. Okay, yeah. Really, it's like throwing the barrels or whatever. And oh, they, oh, oh, you mean like Jumpman. Jumpman. Yeah. Okay, yeah like yeah. where Mario basically like originated, right? Yes. Okay. So they've got like the whole like Jumpman setup going on. They obviously had to set up for like the, the Donkey Kong, like DK. Oh yeah. The Donkey, the DK rap Donkey from the, Don Kong. the N64 yeah. Donkey Kong. See, so yeah. you, you knew that was going to be coming. And then it was just sort of like, oh. Well, if you're if we're doing the army thing, we're gonna need carts. Yeah, and then it's like now's the opening cutscene for the Mario Kart video game. Yeah, like, like they very much had like we want it. It didn't seem like they were trying to like be a super original movie or anything in terms of like the plot by any means. Yeah, like no. overall, I mean, but but to be fair, the plot of every Mario game is the same. 
Okay. You know, like every single Mario game is just, oh no, Bowser kidnapped Princess Peach, and now you gotta go save her. And like, the only real swap is that Bowser kidnapped Luigi, and now you and Peach will go save her. And, except uh, except Peach is like way more qualified on like the game, and like, you know, it's just yeah, like- Yeah, Peach I, is like a little OP in this case, right. which is fine. I, I, I loved Peach in the movie. <laughs> no, I thought she was great, yeah. but like when it came to like doing like, like, like battling Donkey Kong to like see whether or not the Kong army was gonna like come on board, it was like, it kind of feels like Peach would do better. It <laughs> like, feels like that, you know, doesn't it? Like, what, what's what's yeah. Mario doing there down there, other than just you know uh, a bit of comic relief and setting up? What is what is Cat Mario called, or is it just Cat no, Mario? It's just Cat Mario. It's just Cat Mario. Yeah. Okay, so it's like yeah. got got to sneak one of those in there. Yeah, and we got to get that in there. There's a Tanuki. Yeah, Tanuki Mario. That one's classic. That's like Super Mario World. So that's very like Super Nintendo, very old. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, anyway, I feel like I've, I feel like I've like I've gotten like too far along already. So like we can we can back up and sort of like work our paces, okay. work our paces like through the through the film. So basically, what you discover is that Mario and Luigi have left their career of like a, a standard like nine to five type of like plumber position, put their entire life savings into creating this um, plumbing business that they're going to be running on their own, and they've created the commercial for it. And, and you're sort of like, okay, like let's see if they can make it. Um, and they go off on their first like plumbing adventure, which just goes so wrong, Sarah. So so very poorly. <laughs> yeah. But the only thing I could think the entire time I was watching it was that it felt like even that scene to me felt like a little bit of like a like a uh, a teaser for like the Secret Life of Pets, like oh. <laughs> like when the plumber comes over and your pet doesn't love the plumber. It's like right. this is what happens. What hijinks. You know, yeah, um, and, and like you know, of course the 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 people downstairs are just like you know like reading their book and sipping tea or whatever, and it's like oh yeah, my god, not gosh, noticing like, what's happening upstairs. And exactly. Stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, then then they go home and they have like dinner with their family, and I would say like the beginning of the movie felt like kind of weird because you just never think of Mario and Luigi not existing inside the Mushroom Kingdom, right? Like. The movie felt the need to like have them live in a world outside of there and then arrive there, which like felt weird because like, not, I guess it's not weird, but like in the meantime, like they have Mario and Luigi's dynamic with their family where they're like, oh, you guys are really making a mistake doing this. And it was like, you guys are all kind of suck. And also like they made this plumbing commercial, which I mean, it's like cringy, but it's almost cringy in like a charming way. Sure. Where, like, and also, also you just have two guys who are plumbers in New York City. So like, I don't think you're gonna have any trouble getting calls. Right, right. You know, like there's a plumbing problem every three seconds. Somewhere right. in the city, there's definitely more plumbing problems than there are plumbers. Like, there, it's fine, it's gonna work. Like. Yes. What is the? Why are you guys all being so mean about it? Uh, right. That was the thing. Was like the the Mario's family. Yeah. Situation was one of those where I was like, never even occurred to me to think of like what Mario's dynamic with his dad was like. Oh, I know. You yeah. Know? It's like, and it felt like a very, very, and there was this theme did slightly exist in the movie, and this is like another one of those where it's like I don't even know what the movie was really uh, like about at the end of the day, like if if it was even trying to say anything, but it had this like really, 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 really light like try to make your parents proud, a little bit of generational trauma. But right. like but like in a way where it was like, are we really trying to make these people proud? Because yeah. they seem they do seem kind of like mean and like they just like they're not like maybe fully getting like what these boys are after and they're clearly like trying their best. And, right. Yeah. So know. that that it is like, yeah, was the point of that just so that Mario and Donkey Kong could have something to bond over or something? Right, because then it yeah. comes up again with Donkey Kong. Yeah, and it's sort like, of like like I feel like they could have just become friends over almost anything else. Right, right. You know? Yes. Um, um but that was the thing is like even even like Donkey Kong he's like you know he's got like these daddy issues as well. Except like his dad is like proudly putting him on display. He's like right. the centerfold. They're chanting his name. Yeah. It's like you know. <laughs> it's like, the problem is that like, from Donkey Kong's perspective, his dad is not proud of him. But like behind, not even behind like closed doors, in the throne room when like, he's like, <laughs> okay, you can have my army if you can defeat my son, which to him, like telegraphs to you, the audience, like that's impossible. Like you, you cannot know, beat my son. You cannot yeah. beat him. Like yeah. this is an unwinnable situation for you. So of course I'll agree to it. So like you, the audience immediately see him be super proud of Donkey Kong. Right, like, right. Like while well, he's not present. And then Donkey Kong shows up and he's like, dad, are you proud of me? And he's acting like he's not. And it's like, what? This, is, this doesn't even jive with like 10 seconds ago. Right, right, yeah. yeah. 
So that, that was like one of those like plot lines or, or, or like attempted themes of the story, you know, and like at the end of the day, Mario and Luigi end up saving the day and their parents are proud of them no, or whatever. Words about that later. Yeah, but, okay. Um, so, um, but anyway, so yes, they they go through all the hijinks and then uh, like, you know, they get home, kind of have like the, the dinner scene with the family where, where Mario doesn't like mushrooms, which I actually thought was kind of like a funny thing to include, especially yeah. where it came back later. Um, you know what's funny about that? And I have no idea if there's any chance. I don't know what the studios are that make the movie but like in the Sonic movies, Sonic hates mushrooms and like Robotnik gets sent to like this mushroom world. Oh, and interesting. I was like, are, like it obviously isn't the Mushroom Kingdom because they're very different looking places and Sonic has like real, real life actors and stuff in it. Sure. So there's that, but I'm like, you know, like you tell you what, if you make a Mario and Sonic movie, people are gonna come see it. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Um, anyway. Is, is it also the case that the Ninja Turtles don't like mushrooms on their pizza or is it just anchovies? Oh, I think it's anchovies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, not the point. So not anyway, the point. Uh, but the city is under under fire or water, under water. so to yeah. speak. Yeah. So the 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 boys go down and they start like exploring this like sewer main burst or something uh, wherein they find a green pipe. Yeah. And it's sort of like, that's the only thing about this this whole movie. And it's like, I don't know, I'm, I'm possibly just taking it too seriously, which is, is you know, uh, one interpretation here. But it's like, oh, okay. So underneath the city of New York, there is a green pipe that will take you to not even like video game land. Like I kept thinking of like comparing it to like Wreck-It Ralph. In oh my yeah, head. it wasn't like they got sucked into the video game. Right. Even though Mario was playing a different Nintendo property, like Kid Icarus up in his room. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So video game and like the, the Jumpman arcade game existed. Right. Uh, so there was all that. Yeah, the green pipe is just like down there. And like clearly a bunch of infrastructure is built around it. So other people have found it. Okay, so this yeah. was this was something that, there were a couple of themes, uh, not even themes, but like details throughout the movie where I kept feeling like it was gonna come back to something yeah. eventually. Mm -hmm. And one of those was that uh, Peach just sort of like arrived one day. Yeah. And like, so Peach wasn't like born a princess or anything like that. She was just sort of found by the toads and they sort of like made her their princess. Yeah, and, and like they tell the story, and I don't know if you felt this way, but it's a little incomplete feeling. Yeah. Where it's just like, yeah, we raised her and she was so nice, we made her our princess. And you're like, yeah, I feel like you left out a big detail in there. Like, what about finding a human being, a, a human baby and raising her and her being nice suddenly qualifies her to just rule the whole land? Right, right, yeah. yeah. It, it was sort of, sort of like an interesting, so, yes, something there. Like, what, yes. what was to what was the Mushroom Kingdom like before she arrived? Ben, what it was missing, Ben, was like like the prophecy or something. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Because, and let me tell you what, it really super felt like there was going to be a prophecy or something revealed at some point. Like, like it would be the case that like when Bowser finds out that like a mustached man is traveling mm -hmm. with with Princess Peach, it'd be like. Yeah. Like, what girl? Yeah, exactly. You know? It's exactly what it felt like because Bowser, yeah, finds like they come in and they're like, we found, oh, apparently she's traveling with a, a mustache man. And his reaction, like, I guess his reaction is just based solely on jealousy. That like, what? She met another male person? Right. Yeah. yeah and yeah. it's like, I guess because he has a crush on her or, or whatever. But like, it his it also could very much re and, and you it, the movie could have used that in a way to be like, oh no, he's reacting because he's jealous. But no, actually he's reacting because there's a prophecy. But then it's like his reaction's that way. But Peach's reaction to seeing Mario is kind of the same. It She's is. like, oh, is it you? Like, are you, you're the, what? You're yeah. a human. And right. it's just like, yeah, also, and and, and then yeah, there's this mystery about like, where did Peach come from? Like, did she come through the warp pipe? The warp pipe's clearly been found by the people before because there's like infrastructure built around it. Like, wh like what, did the warp pipes come up later and then it just get like stuck there? Is that like part of, part of the missing pieces of the story? Um, Cause it like clearly like, they're also setting up like Mario Galaxy or something in oh, some capacity. Sure. Yeah, you know? I mean, there was at least the scene yeah. where it's like, there's so many galaxies out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, sort of like allow that. Which also sounds like they're just uh, setting up like, you know, greater Nintendo characters to come in. Right, um, right. From other corners of the Nintendoverse or whatever. Uh, a lot of open doors, but it did feel like there was like a missing thread um, about that because, and this is, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Take a left turn into Toad. For Do a it. Second. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, because Did you one hundred percent think that he was like a like a foil, dude. I thought yes. Okay, so I really thought 
that Toad was going to end up being like a double agent. Absolutely. For, for Bowser, right? Ab because like, who's informing Bowser I the whole know. time? This yeah. is the thing, like, I thought, because here's the thing, like, the Mario story, like we said earlier, is the same every time. Yes. It's always Bowser kidnaps Peach, Mario saves Peach. That's the story. Like, I get it. And like, the the thing is, they've done that for the last 30 years. And everyone going to see the movie has played the games. And, and all of the characters are so beloved. You don't need to explain to us anything about the characters. Sure. Right? We get it. Peach is sweet. Mario is like dopey, but he's a plumber. He jumps. Luigi is afraid. Bowser is big and dangerous. We get it. Toad is a lovable helper forever. You don't, like, you have so many preconceived, like, notions about these characters that, like, that's just it. Right. You know? And they could have really used that to, um, uh, what is it? Um, like subvert your expectations. Subvert, subvert your expectations, which is what I thought they were gonna do. So, like, yeah, the, you meet Toad, he meets Mario immediately as soon as he comes through the pipe, and he just, like, takes her, takes her to Peach, and he, like, sneaks her into the castle, and then they go on the adventure, and he, like, worms his way into the adventure, like, right at the last second, she's like, you're going, you're like, that felt too easy, but I guess they just wanted Toad on the adventure as the writers of the movie. Right. But then, like, immediately, then you cut to Bowser, and they're like, our sources say that she's traveling with a mustached man, and you're like, oh, okay. And you're like, you've seen Bar Bowser's army at this point, so like, maybe, sure, he just sort of has eyes everywhere, but also, they're only traveling with one other person, and it's Toad. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it, it definitely, um, again, if you go back to like the prophecy idea, it's like if there's like this known prophecy, and all of a sudden Mario comes like shooting out of this tube, and even Toad is able to recognize like, Oh, this is the one. Even if like, there's even if there's a prophecy that explain if if there's a prophecy and Toad's a double agent, then it's like Bowser's at least smart enough to like post a man at every warp pipe. Exactly. You know, yeah, that it's yeah. like, oh, of course he met him the moment he got there because he's look he's waiting for him. Even Toad is the only one who doesn't have like matching vest and like head color and everything. Yeah. So it does, it felt like it's like something is different about it. I mean, and it, yeah. like, I think it's just like one of those like like main character armor type it's things. It's exactly it's like, what it is. Yeah. It's like, because he's a character who you're supposed to remember, he's going to look yeah. slightly different from all of the other Toads and that's that. And that's that. Um, yeah, but so there's that. Then when they're like, they, they go and they get Donkey Kong, they're like, all right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the secret path to ambush Bowser. And then they cut to Bowser and they're like, they're taking the secret path to ambush Bowser. But it's like the secret path, which obviously was not a secret to anybody. Not at all. Not <laughs> because even he's a like, bit. well, I'll ambush them. And you're like, okay, but like Toad was in the room for that. So how did you find it? Like, no one was in the room. Who told you? Who told you? Who told like, you? Who told you they were going on the secret path? So there's that. Uh, you've got, yeah, Toad meeting Mario, Toad informing them about, or Toad possibly informing them about traveling with Mario, Toad possibly telling them about um, uh, going down the secret path. Then at one point, Toad even like reiterates the peach and he's like, I said I wouldn't let anything happen to you or something. Right. And it's like, like it's it's like one of those sentences where it's like, yeah, I'm not gonna let anything harm you because Bowser wants to marry you and I'm working for Bowser. Right, yeah, it's yeah. like, it almost seems like one of those things like at the wedding, like, I told you I wouldn't let anything harm you. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, it's like harm is different from being like, like in this case, harm is different from being forced into this marriage. Right, exactly. It's yeah. like, yeah, I'm like, not, yeah. I, you are I, not I, physically harmed. Yeah, like I've been sent here to spy on you and to protect you from dying so that you can marry him, basically. Right. And then even when Bowser, like the thing Bowser does to convince Peach to marry him is to like torture that toad. Like it was, like I was gonna be like, it's like, oh, he wasn't even torturing him. He was just you like know? frozen. Is it, he's stasis, just frozen. Yeah. He's just like, he's just using him all the way. And then like, that's like his big bargaining chip and like, oh, it worked again. Like that would have been such like a sneak. I thought exactly that's where this was going the whole time. Oh, I, will, I would say even all the way up to the point of the defeat of Bowser, because the pacing of this movie is like, lightning fast. Like, I will say that it was like over before I knew it. Mm. Uh, but like one of the things was is like, you know, you get up there, it's like New York City, like all this stuff's happening. Basically Luigi and uh, Mario get the, the superstar and become star powered or whatever mm -hmm. and defeat Bowser. And I was like, oh man, but you know what's about to happen. It's Toad, about, it's about, Toad's about Toad's to step in. Toad's about to step in. It's about to be like, psych! Yeah. Whole like, like that was only like the first, that was like the first boss battle, but the real boss battle is the <laughs> boss battle you never saw all along. Yeah, right. And it was like, okay, now it's gonna happen. Now it's gonna happen. And then it was like, no, this, this is just the end of the movie. That was it. That was the end of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought there would be a third act, um, and and maybe maybe I guess I feel like like that's that was like a, like another piece of it that I was just like, huh, 
Well, they also have the weird, I thought this was like a weird choice to like have them warp back to New York City for the final fight. Oh yeah, like, yeah. We just left, it's like, I thought like the reason you did that is so that like Mario's family could see them save the day, but it feels weird to have that final fight not in the Mushroom Kingdom or also, I don't think we needed Mario's family in the movie at all. So it even honest. feels yeah. like the type of thing like where they could have like, Mario and Luigi could have like saved the day completely and actually been heroes, unlike in the beginning, like where they did sort of a poor job going and like fixing the, the plumbing calamity. But like almost like they come in again at the end of the day, like as, as heroes, as people who've just like saved an actual princess and a kingdom and an entire populace of toads. And it's like the family's like still ragging on them. But like now, now the good news is, is that it's like Mario and Luigi are like, we're good though. Like, you know what? We've we've done cool. Like, we don't need their approval. It's right. almost more like what it felt like the Mario's family saga would have gone more towards at the end instead of like winning the approval of parents who kind of just seemed mean. Right. It's like, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Did anybody see Encanto? Yeah. <laughs> Someone should pull it up real quick and okay. let them watch it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, while we're on the note of the final fight, where okay. they like finally get the superstar or whatever, yeah. I will say that, you know, they're about to lose or whatever, and you know, Mario's going to reach for the star and Luigi blocks it, and then both of them grab the star and get powered up and like, you know, provide like a double whomping on Bowser, all invincible like, which is fine. My only, my like, what almost bothered me about it is that like Luigi also got the star because like, I guess he's on something of a like becoming a little bit braver arc throughout the movie or something. But like you see Mario at the beginning of the movie, they do this cool, like almost like parkour through a construction site. Like the, the movie did a good job, I thought of providing a lot of like 2D Mario platformer action and making it feel realistic inside of a 3D world. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is, and, is there any is there any Mario game because at, during that scene like where they're on their way to the per, the like yeah. the, the side scrolly like type of scene they're going to the plumbing thing. It almost seems like they were setting up for a video game where Mario runs the level and has to consistently like provide the pathway for like Luigi. I, I think there is a game where you play as the two of them and it is like a puzzle solver where it's like, you need one to go ahead to do this and then someone to pull a lever over here to let this guy through. And like, yes. I think there is a game like that okay. uh, on one of the Game Boys. And it, I, that, that is what it made me think of. Like it, what there must be because that scene played out very much like a look what we're doing. Right, yeah, it's, like, it's like, oh yeah. Yeah, but anyway. Um, Luigi's not helping Mario at all in that scene. He's just sort of like walking through and Mario's setting up everything for him. And then you go, like, you see Mario get better at becoming a hero throughout the movie, you know, like all the way. Okay, yeah, You know, sure. you see him suck at the training course and then he gets better at it. And then they go and he fights Donkey Kong and he's, you know, not afraid to do it, but then he's getting beaten and then he gets better and then he builds the card and he has like his little moments on the card. And, you know, like he's, you see him continuously actually improve a little bit step by step through the movie. Whereas Luigi gets captured basically immediately. And the only thing he does from there is hold up the sewer plate to stop the one blast of fire. Oh yes, yes you know, yeah, like yeah. he doesn't do anything like, and son, but once he gets the superstar, they're just exactly equal. And he's as good as Mario in every way. Right. And I was right. like, well, I feel like we watched Mario really earn this. And like, I'm glad I get, it's like, I guess I'm glad you, you stopped him with the sewer plate or whatever, but like, even when he stopped him, like Mario was just reaching for the star while Bowser was shooting fire at him, which then Luigi puts the plate down and then he just shoots fire at him again and they just both reach for the star. Right. It's like you just did the exact same scene, except now both of them can grab it. So I don't know, you could have just not had Luigi pick up the plate and he still would have just grabbed the star and we would have had the final fight. So I don't know. I just felt a little, I don't, I didn't feel as earned for Luigi to me. Yeah, well, and I, that was like basically what I just kept coming back to though myself is that like all of the arcs throughout the entire, throughout the entire movie seemed kind of shallow at best. Like they didn't really like super get a whole lot of like lift off where you saw them like kind of become, become super who they were. I guess you have a good point like with, with Mario, like you at least watch him do some some of the stuff yeah um and and then you know kind of slowly progress and go into like hero mode one of the things that i did think it was that was interesting on the note again of that final battle is that i think that like when mario was fighting donkey kong he physically isn't like harmed at all oh yeah but like then when they are back in new york it seems like he's got like like a like a swollen cheek or like a yeah, black eye or something like, a, like he's grabbing a shoulder a lot yeah it was like i'm curious if there are any like 
at some point in time, if you were to learn more about like the lore of the various worlds, like almost if he like did enter a video game where it's like, as you can get like comically punched and not be hurt because that's right. like part of being in that world. Yeah. Whereas like when you're back in New York City, it's like, no, you can actually get hurt out here. Right. And that is like what's happening actively. Um, so that was that was something I thought was interesting, at least for like lore building, if we end up getting like more more films in this entire, like in this same same overall yeah. overall. World. Oh, which we're certainly getting at least one more Mario movie because that well, I'm sure certainly they they set you up for the sequel. For Yoshi. Yeah, for Yoshi yeah. To, yeah. to be introduced, which um they already introduced like a bunch of Yoshis in this one, so I guess our Yoshi will be different. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Be be curious to see. Does Yoshi usually talk or just usually say Yoshi? No, he usually doesn't talk. Yeah. Okay. So but who who knows? Maybe he will. <laughs> Maybe he will. Yeah. Yeah. Um okay, that, that's cool. Um moving on, the next thing I would say is uh what did you think about like the Bowser story overall? Oh man, Ben. I loved Bowser. Did you? <laughs> I okay. I loved Bowser. I thought he was look, I thought like when they said Jack Black was playing Bowser, like I was like, well, I'm all on board. That's amazing. I love that casting. And then I saw the trailers and I was like, dude, it's amazing. He's so good as Bowser. But then when you see the movie, it's like, oh, now I see why they wanted Jack Black to play Bowser. So he could like, because like, he do does the... like the Tenacious D song. Yes. And yes. like it, they are, I mean, I thought they were like, you're watching it and it's coming out of left field. Like you are not expecting it at all, I don't think. I mean, I guess that's always sort of Bowser's thing. Like even in the games, like he does want to marry Peach sometimes. Like he's that's why he's kidnapping her, I okay. guess. Yeah. Like this isn't unheard of. And like even his like wedding suit thing at the era and like that's a costume ripped right out of Mario Superstars, which was on the Switch. Okay. Um, which is, you know, cool. So I was like, oh, I see what you're doing. That's really cool. Um, so none of that like was necessarily that weird, although it definitely feels like, you know, you see him like, you know, just take down this kingdom and then he's given this big rally speech at this like punk rock bar of his and he's like, and we're gonna have a wedding. And they're like, what? Huh? What was that? <laughs> yeah, I know. I suppose yeah. it was good that at least the rest of the people there were like, were like, hold on. Uh -huh. But, what? Yeah, but so like the song, like I'm, you're watching it, and I was like, this is like almost uncomfortable to watch. Like it's very cringy. Oh, it's like, very, yeah. Very. But then, yeah. but but here's the thing. That's the point. It's supposed to be cringy. So to that end, I think they are succeeding marvelously. Okay. Like, it is. It's like it's, you're watching, and you're like, this is making me uncomfortable, and it's like it should be. It's supposed to. That's the point. It's like. You're not expecting to see Bowser sing a song, and he's so bad. And like, I thought it was so funny, uh, but like, act, yes, also uncomfortable because it's like, what are you doing? What is happening right now? Is Bowser singing a song? <laughs> yeah. I've never seen this before. Yeah. I don't know how to feel. Peaches, peaches, peaches. Yeah, yeah. he calls her peaches. peaches. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I know. Yeah, I thought I, I thought it was very funny, and like, I mean, I used to have like Tenacious D, which was like Jack Black's like band. Yeah. Uh, like, on on burnt CDs in my car yeah. as a high school student. Mm -hmm. Like I used to like love some Tenacious D. I just always think that type of like comedy music is hilarious yeah. and, and perfect. Uh, the only thing was that like, I, I sometimes felt like they were like squishing in like, like little like musical numbers and stuff. And of course, like if you know who Jack Black is, it's like very fitting, like, like School of Rock, you know, just for example, yeah. it's like, yes. uh, but there was the scene where he, who's this little companion guy? He's like, he's oh, like, uh, Namek. Namak or uh, Kamek, sorry. Kamek. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a scene where he's like he's like playing the piano, and then Kamek comes <laughs> and sits next to him and is doing like the. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yes. Um, and that that was one where I was like, oh my god, they're like doing like the music, but it was also like I don't know if I think it fits the scene. Like it was. Like it almost felt like he like like he, Bowser needed to like say something that wasn't as menacing, like sort of like, it, again, like more like fairy tale wedding to Peach, but then like, like Kam Kamek, Kamek? Uh, yes, Kamek. K okay, uh, would follow it up with, with like, <clears throat> and then we, -na 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 -na. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like almost like, like there, there's still this issue of like, Bowser is not <coughs> as sinister as everyone thinks he is. And like, he is just genuinely, fantasizing about his fairy tale wedding. Right. And, but like everybody else is like, and then the lava pit. Yeah. And it's like, what? No, no. Th then we, then flowers and wedding and 
songs. He does, have, he does have a sacrificial lava pit at the wedding, though. He does have a sacrificial yeah. lava pit at the wedding. Yeah. For her. Yeah. For her, yeah. right, yes. Yeah. Sacrifice all the prisoners. For you! <laughs> For you, yeah. Um, yeah. So, anyway, I, I mean, yeah. There, there. I felt like throughout the movie, there was a lot of, like, I definitely, like, laughed out loud a good handful of times. Yeah. Um, but I also felt like there were there were definite moments where I felt like there were, like, references to deep cut Mario, Mario stuff that I was like, I feel like I know that that was one of those moments that I was supposed to get the thing and I didn't. Right. And so like, there's a couple of those moments where it's like the song like went over my head, so to speak. And it was right. kind of like, okay, yeah, all right. I, 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 maybe I get that, maybe I don't get that. Like, so like when like Luigi, for example, like, is that supposed to be like Luigi's mansion? Uh, I think so. Like, like he's got the, the beginning. flashlight. Yeah, he's the got plunger. the flashlight and whatever. Yeah, I think the, yeah, Luigi's like kidnapping was supposed to be like a nod to Luigi's mansion. Right, yeah. Yeah, at but, the beginning. Yeah. But they, they definitely like zipped you through a lot of these scenes, like very, very, very quickly. Like I kept thinking that everything, that's why I kept saying is like everything to me felt like a cut scene. It was almost like, like, Luigi finding himself trapped inside of this like haunted spooky world, you know, almost felt like like the scene that if you don't press start on your controller while the while the console's booting up, like that's the scene you watch. And then it's like, at some point in time, he like opens the door to the mansion and like, that's like when it would freeze and like the screen would pop up and like, it's like press start to play. Right. You know, and uh, same same thing like with like Mario on the Rainbow Road, like where he does like his like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. you know, like he like drifts a little bit. Right, yeah. It's almost like, it seems like freeze frame, mid drift, yeah. press start to play. Uh, yeah, that's exactly know? what it felt like. But like I, at the same time, like you're right, like um, the, it, it, there were like very like cutscene feeling-esque things, but like, uh, I guess if, I, maybe I was just getting more of them than you were. That's entirely but, possible. I yeah. know you've played more Mario games than I have. Yeah, so. but like, you're right. Like, we're nitpicking this movie a lot, but like, you're right. Like, this movie brought me like so many like full on grins and laughs yeah. throughout. Like, I was just like, in way, like, the plot was only so so. The nostalgia and like the ah was like at a 100. Okay. You know, like they were doing a great job at that stuff, which is what I feel like mostly what they were trying to do more than anything else was just like, let's just be as much of a love letter to the entire franchise as possible is what it seemed like to me. Like uh, the music I thought in particular all throughout the movie was awesome. Yeah. Like they, you like, you, I don't think I realized how ingrained all the different themes have become like in into like my brain over the last you know 30 years of playing mario games sure but like they i think they like uh they redid most of the music you know to um for whatever the scene called for or whatever but like the ways they would work it in were very clever or like um even like thematically like uh, we, we've talked about them discovering the green pipe like down below right but so like they go into the sewers and they're like walking down the stairs and there's even like a sign on the background that says like entering level 1-2 or something. Right. But it's like yeah. if you play the original Mario Brothers game, level 1-2 is when you go beneath, when you go into the sewers and like via the pipe. And as they were going down the stairs, they were doing the da 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 like music like in the background. And it was like, this is really clever. This is very good. That is exactly what level one, two looks like. And that's the music they play on the level. Like, right. I really liked that. Um, like when they go on the Rainbow Road, the Rainbow Road always has the same like uh, Rainbow Road music. Did Was it the case he couldn't bounce off the edges of the Rainbow Road? Or like, what did he almost keep going off the edge of the Rainbow Road? Because that's always like, when you're playing Mario Kart, the thing that's always awful about Rainbow Road is that you can usually just like drive right off the edge. Yeah, yeah, I think with the I think with the exception of the N64 one, where they have this like Stargate around the entire uh, oh, edge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, one of the challenging parts of Rainbow Road is that there's no edge, so it's very easy to fall off the level. Right. And then this is what I thought was amazing, and I could not believe they put it in there. But when they start like, like trying to drift away from it. Like Peach tries to drift away from somebody and all of a sudden she gets the speed boost. Like the, the drifting was in the movie. Oh, wow. Like, okay, I did not catch that. Oh my gosh, she does it like a few times. She like goes over and it goes boom, boom. And it like, she shot forward a couple times. I'm like, oh my God, they're doing the drifting. That's so fun. That's so cool. I thought that, that, that was cool. all very clever. They did the blue shell. As soon as I saw the guy in the blue shell cap, I was like, I know what you do. Oh my gosh, I thought, <laughs> yeah. the, I thought the blue shell scene though, I was like, I was like, it was almost like, oh my gosh! They're like, that's how they did, that's how they decided to do the blue shell. That's how they decided the blue shell. That he is now he is now the blue shell. Oh yeah. Why I, did he have the big rig when yeah. he can just blue shell you the way that like you imagine a blue shell? It, that was like <clears> the <throat> one where I was like, that's so funny. They did the blue shell, and then I like I think five minutes later I was like, 
and now Lady of the Blues. Yeah, we got. I, th- I yeah, like I saw him, and it's like I know what you're clearly going to represent. Uh, but you're right. Then, like, when the moment came and he like yells, he's like blue shell, and he just like turns into it. I was yes. like, that was a little cheesy. Just yeah, you know, whatever. Okay, but it's fine because he blue shelled him, and everyone hates the blue shell. And right, 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 right. Yeah. Great, you did it. You did the thing. Of course, you had to. Right, uh, and it worked. Uh, but so that was cool. That was good. I thought uh, the giant eel that eats him. I think that was supposed to be like the eel in the N64 Mario. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah I remember that one. Yeah. I kept wondering when he was swimming underwater if like the little like health bar was gonna pop uh, up and just like just arbitrarily be like yeah this is showing you how much how much air he has left yeah because i always remember that being a thing when i was a kid it was almost like everything i wanted to do in n64 was swim underwater longer than i was supposed to yeah right like oh yeah that would have been so funny if you had like the, the pie chart thing yes. pop up that would have been great yeah. yeah that was uh that was maybe maybe one little one little miss they had <laughs> yeah, t- yeah. T- t- just a tiny Jeez, little come miss. on guys no so i mean anyway i mean yeah i think i think that you've you've definitely like nailed nailed it like where i think the nostalgia was completely captured like it was really cool to see these things like all throughout like our childhood like you know we we played a lot of like super mario 64 on the n64 as a yep. kid certainly got lots of references to that lots of the the mario kart references i thought were so much fun um Obviously, we said Luigi's Mansion, you know, and, and I mean, these things were like speckled in just like all throughout, all over the place. I mean, it was really just, it was a love letter for Mario video game fans. Uh, and, I, and I think that it's like, that is, that's who it's for. Right, I think um, like the move, like the story is a vessel for the references is what yes. it feels like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But like, I even I even remember like kind of early on in the movie, there's a couple of scenes that like are almost like a little bit creepy. And I like, I like leaned over and whispered to you at the movie theater, I was like, do you think your kids would be able to like watch this? Um, and and I mean, it's it's sort of like one of those things, like depending on the age of the kids and everything and like what their like exposure to other stuff is. Yeah. But like as a kid for me, I remember being like absolutely terrified of Nightmare Before Christmas. Like, oh, sure. It was like one of those things, like I don't even know if it's meant to be a kid's movie, but like it scared me. Yeah. And so I was like watching some of those scenes and I was like, I can maybe see this being scary. But then as the movie kept going on, I was like, then who is supposed to watch this movie? Because I do think you need to be a more leaned in fan of Nintendo and Mario properties to appreciate a lot of what this movie has to right. offer. I don't necessarily think that it's like exclusively like a video for or a movie for little kids that could also just then be appreciated by adults, which is kind of like what I feel like Disney Animation Studios tends to do yeah. with their film. So I, I can see overall this being like a like niche cult classic, like loved by a specific group of people. I think it is, I mean, it almost like, in in order to get like the majority of the references, you need to have played probably like most of the games from like Super Mario Bros through like Mario Superstar. Right. Which almost, almost dictates like if you if you were to have grown up with them and just played them as they came out, that you would be like our age, right? Um, so I don't know if it's targeted like at millennials, but um, I think millennials will love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think there's I think there's that. <clears throat> but um, I also I think my kids would love it too. Like it, because I think if you're a kid, the story isn't as important. You know, that's true. You know, like the, if you're a kid, the story is great. You know, it's exactly what you want out of a kid's movie. Right. Um, where that, whereas then if you're an adult, like maybe like what Disney movies have gone for is this sort of like great, like deeper understanding where they're tackling like generational trauma works. Like if you're a kid watching Encanto, like you don't notice any of that. That's uh, the, not what you're song, paying attention to. Yeah, the songs are catchy and yeah. the colors are bright. But like you as an adult are able to appreciate that. Whereas this time it's like you as an adult are just able to like relive your childhood because it's like all these Mario references. The right. Whole time whereas if you're a kid you're just like yay mario's fighting bowser right 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 yeah yeah yep, absolutely i did like the fact that that they did i kept wondering like at what point in time they were going to do like the tail yes i was the like oh, they, i was like they have got to do the tail spin and yeah, they did yeah that it. was good yeah that was cool yeah so anyway okay i think i think that maybe once again we found ourselves in a situation where you may have liked the movie more than i liked the movie i mean i this was i was th- this was the weird thing is that like as i'm watching it like like I, I realized that like I was I was smiling a lot, but it was always because of like the references, not because like, oh, that was so cool or something. Right. Like, so I think like they did a good job of making me enjoy the movie for a majority of the time, but in a way that I don't typically enjoy movies because like it was like the enjoyment was coming from like a different place. Okay. But um, so th- it was it was like a, an unusual experience in that way. Yeah, yeah, and and I think like I, I would say I felt the same way. Like I didn't really feel negatively about the movie 
for any like one thing. Like, yeah. there, like there wasn't anything where I was like, wow, now that was just really like, like that, that didn't feel right. Or they could have done that better. Like, you know, this, that, or the other. Like it just, it didn't really feel like, like I, I think that I've really grown to like love like the deep themes, like you said, like the general, yeah. like, like when I watch Encanto, like, like that movie, like, hit me yeah you know it was like like i had like physical emotional yeah, yeah, like, like <gasps> it's like yeah you know like the, that that song just like resonated mm. in like a, like a million different ways while also being like like cheerful and funny and cute and happy and upbeat and like you know like it did like a lot of things uh whereas i think this this like definitely like focuses in on on like really nailing that nostalgia which i do which i would agree with you i think it did like yeah. i think it nails the nostalgia of of everything to do Mario franchise, but otherwise, I, the 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 biggest 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 thing for me is that I could not believe just how fast the movie was over because it it didn't feel like it should be yet. Like I I still felt like there was plenty of room for the other shoe to drop, so mm -hmm. to speak. Like yeah. for the next the next thing to happen, for the toad turn to happen. Like like. You're sort of watching like the scene set up as you expect it to, which is which is exactly like you said. Like it's like Bowser and Peach and you know, like this whole dilemma and Mario's gonna have to find a way to save the day, whatever. And I and I just kept thinking like there was something else that was gonna happen. And you it wasn't. Like you just got to the end of the movie and it was like, okay. It went just as yeah, expected. Yeah, how you thought it was gonna go. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, I will let you give a score first. Oh man, I think I think I mean I did enjoy it a lot. Um like I said, it was it was like a different kind of enjoyment. I think I'm giving it like a 79. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. I think that that's a uh, I think that's a very very fair score. Uh, I think I think for mine, I was probably a little bit lower, but not like not terribly. Like maybe like a 60. I'll give it a 64. A si hey, a 60. Wow, that might be your lowest grade ever. It could be. Well, I know, but like the thing is, is that like it's. I would say it's a very enjoyable 64. Like I I very frequently find myself like when you're finding like bad comedies or something like that. Like it's like sometimes it's like this is not like really like a critically acclaimed movie or anything like that, but like it's fun to watch. Yeah. Um and and I think that this would classify certainly in that way, but that was that was like everybody who who I had told I had like seen the movie they were like, "Yeah, like what'd you think?" And I was like, "It's fun." And like it wasn't like, "Oh my god, it's Fun. It was like, and it, it wasn't like eh, it was fun, you know. Right. Like, like it's so weird because like, like the inflection matters. It was like it's fun. It's a fun movie. Like if if I was if I was somewhere and it was playing, I would certainly sit down and watch it and right. not be like, what are we doing? Like, right. can we like, please go do something else? If you played Mario games, you'll like the movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that that's like one of those where again going back to like that Lego Movie like kind of comparison. Like I expected. It's maybe more of like what I expected the Lego movie to be. And then like the Lego movie just also ended up being like a, a really like engaging story as well. Right. Um, and so maybe that's like where I would say like those those points kind of like would, would win out for me and like give it like a little bit more umph. Um, but overall, like I, I would still like recommend people seeing it. Like I think it would be, I mean, chances are if you've watched our entire review up to this point, you already have seen it. Yeah. Um, but I am very curious to see, like I, I haven't looked up anything about like the Rotten Tomatoes score. No, me neither. Should we do that real fast? Oh, okay, go for it. Give it a game How did we compare? How did we compare? This is kind of fascinating to me. So Tomato Meter is giving it a 55. Oh gosh. Um, but the audience score is a 96. Yeah, that, I mean, that I feel like that's basically what we were saying though. It's like, it's not critically acclaimed, but yes, go see it. Yes, I yeah. think that's, I like, think that's I mean, that's, that's, how, that's how those audience scores work. It's not like they give it, a, I think they just say like, good or bad and then they like average that out to get their percentage or something right is that how it works on rotten tomatoes i don't know how it works, I don't know how it works. yeah either way that that sounds exactly right to me like it, yeah like if you just want to go see a fun movie like yeah you're gonna like it it's gonna be fun to see yes if you're trying to like be really critical like it was just the next best movie ever like don't expect that but i don't think you did going in so Right, yeah. yeah, that's a very good point. It's a very, very good, yeah, very good point. So anyway, guys, I'm deadly curious to hear what you thought of the Mario movie. Would you want more inside of this world? Are you okay leaving? Oh, that's the thing. If they made a sequel, not? I'd still go see it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I mean, and, and I'd be so curious, like, because when I saw like that end credit scene, I was like, 
is this for like a Yoshi movie or is this like Mario will meet Yoshi? Mario will meet, uh, it feels like Mario will meet Yoshi if I had to bet. There's like baby Bowser in the next one. Okay. Yeah, that would be my guess. They certainly did use the baby characters like yes, straight they did. up. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that surprised me. I was like, okay. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's so cute. They're doing the baby, they do a little flashback. And of course they got baby Mario, baby Luigi, so cute. Was the little kid that baby Mario stood up for Luigi? the guy who had hired them because he was Spike. wearing sunglasses. Yeah, I think that was supposed to be okay. yeah, him as well. Oh, I bet, um, I would also bet like Wario and Waluigi could pop in. True. Yeah, they, True. They, they left room for like Daisy to come in as well, Stu, or like Birdo. So there's still plenty of characters they didn't introduce just yet. The little uh, Rosalina star. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Was was certainly there, right? Was that what that like the kind of like self de like the the depressing star? Yeah, yeah. I felt like that star was there for like yeah. yeah don't worry, Mario Galaxy coming. This is from Mario Galaxy. That's not this movie, but the the characters here. So don't be surprised. Okay. okay. Yeah. Fun that, stuff. That's sort of what that felt like to me. Yeah. So and then I think that the theory. This is like the the timey wimey theory is that Rosalina is like the daughter of Peach and Mario, but she's like been out in space and lost in time and she's like older than them or something. Oh, <laughs> in like a weird. weird. Way. Yeah. That's kind yeah. of fun. Okay. Yeah. They didn't really like resolve any romance between Mario and Peach yet either. They sort of like joke about like, are you flirting with her? Like she would never go out with you. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was funny. Like, like normally the Mario games end with like Mario getting like a kiss or like getting a cake or something. They didn't even do that. Oh, know? a cake would have been amazing. Oh yeah, they sh they so should have done Peach makes Mario a cake. That, that would have been amazing. That would have been fun. That would have been fun. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, guys, be sure to let us know what you think in the towel section down below. Also, if you would like to get the new super sweater, what? this is now uh, an official piece of the Super Carlin Brother merch lineup. It's available over at carlinbrothersmercantile.com. Link yes, in the description is. down below. I will say that they come pre-oversized. They do. So if you are someone who's like, oh, I love me a good oversized cruise sweater. Just get, um, just get the size you would normally get. Yes, and it will be oversized right. in the process. And if you would like it more form-fitting, then maybe size down because they do come quite large. Again, link in the description down below. Otherwise, guys, until next time, bye. bye.